I call to order the July 9th, 2019 meeting for the Saline County Board of Commissioners. Will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Shadwick. Commissioner Sparks. Here. Commissioner Vidrickson. Here. Commissioner Weiss. Here. Commissioner White. Here. I ask that you please stand and join me in a flag salute followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We now move to the uh, public forum where a uh, portion of our meeting where citizens may speak on county government, usually limited to three minutes, and uh, items that are not on today's agenda. Norman Annalslana. I brought this issue up to you here a couple weeks ago about the Oliver Hague land. Please leave, leave it with the uh, administrator, please. Why you don't want to read it? <laughs> well, I'm not going to read it here in the open public, no, sir. We've got business to turn. Like your three minutes are running. <laughs> we will read it. Uh, will there be handouts on the jail proposals at the next week's meeting on paper so that people can read it so we can see what you're talking about? Sure. And will there be an, after that, will there be another town meeting before the election? And third, on our public forum, why can't it be moved towards the end of the program just before adjournment so we can comment on issues that you've discussed and you don't allow the citizens to participate? Can't answer that. You're the commissioner. You should have an answer. <laughs> I'm one commissioner. It takes three to, to get anywhere to make a vote. So that is something that we have to uh, take care of. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wish to speak? I'm Lene Meyer from Salina. I really wasn't here to speak. I want to just kind of stay on top of what's going on. Um, I've spoke before about the whole jail project and our group, of course, is moving slow, but in view of the fact that you are having the architects come next week. Uh, of course, some of us will be here to listen. And I, my question is, and, and then we're gonna meet the Friday after that. My question is, um, I mean, I'm really ready to put the word out to our group. Let's have a community meeting. We don't know how many people we'll draw. Um, but uh, at what point will we be able to know what you're going to advocate or ask for in terms of the jail situation. Uh, originally, of course, we said we're saying it's more than just the beds. It's about programming to help them not come back for another bed. So I'm, I'm really wanting to know when it'll be even approximate of um, when you'll know just what you are going to ask the voters to vote for. Um, uh, good questions and good point and I can't answer that for you right now. I, I can tell you this much, the wheels are turning pretty slowly. Uh, you will be given plenty of advance notice on, on the issues that you're talking about. Uh, I would say we'd be, I don't know, 30, 60, 90 days even down the road, wouldn't you, Andrew, as far as when we really decide uh, because we're going to have to listen to the architects. They're going to have to get back to us. Uh, is it going to be nothing? Is it going to be a, a, a jail project that, that um, the, a renovation or is it a greenfield site? Uh, those are the things that, that are still pretty dangling quite a ways up in the air. So we, we got to come up with those answers first and then, then we would uh, proceed. Uh, and select an architect, obviously, and which is, which is going to be a, a process in and of itself. So when we get to the point where hopefully we do have some community people to, to listen, um, would one or all of you be able to come and, and represent yourselves? And of course we will, our group will say what we think is important too. Would that be a possibility when we get that far? I would say yes. Uh, okay. I mean, without question, uh, we want to have the public's input. There would no doubt be more public input as we move forward, I would say in the form of a commission meeting. But uh, I mean, any time that any group in Salina that wishes to contact a commissioner to come and speak to their group, uh, we're available. 
okay. uh, somebody would be. Uh, I mean, as an example, on the, the Rotary Club or the uh, AMBUX and uh, uh, so on and so forth, have asked different people within our organization to speak, and they do come in and uh, attend their meetings. Good. More so, and more people I talk to and tell them what we're trying to advocate for, they say yes, yes, yes. And they're really wanting to look broader than a bunch of new beds that just, you know, it doesn't speak to their soul and, and helping them heal at all. Right, and, and I mean, you recognize the fact that there, there are a whole lot of steps in this process, and there's a whole lot more than, like you said, than, than, uh, than um, beds. Yeah, so. sounds like since you've been to Hutch for one thing, that's opened some doors maybe to not just um, the money issues, but also maybe helping these people grow within and not commit again. That's kind of what I pick up, and I'm excited about that. So anyway, All right. I'll let my committee know what you're saying. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for regular business. Item number one. <clears throat> approve agenda for public forum as presented. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the agenda for the public forum as presented. Second. Been moved and seconded that we approve today's agenda for the public forum. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion does carry. Item number two. County engineer update. Justin Mater, county engineer. Good morning, Mr. Mater. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Well, what you should have in front of you is an 11 by 17 map. Um, and what this map consists of is all work that needs to be completed this year. Okay, so what's not on there is the programmed work that's been completed. You know, I tried to make this map as, as simple as possible, and, and again, with my quarter report, I'm trying to, you know, look forward, um, you know, for the rest of the year on, on what we need to do. So everything that's been completed is not shown on this map. Um, so as, as you're probably very well aware, this has been a difficult year for road and bridge construction. Um, you know, whether you're working on a county crew or a contractor, it's been a tough year to, to get some work done. Um, and so I've, I've got a feeling that in order to get a lot of this program completed, it's going to be a, a very busy end of the year uh, for us as we're trying to complete projects. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump into um, the 2018 work that has been uh, contracted in 2018 but has not yet been completed yet and that's two reinforced concrete box uh, projects on Reese Road and Honick Road and those are the on, if you look on the map there on those two roads that's the um, the reinforced concrete boxes that need to be completed those are with the uh, light blue circles on your map and those two projects are, um, they're contra we're contracting with Reese Construction to perform those um, projects. I was hoping to have those started by now, uh, but just with the rain and then with a project on Don Meyer Road that I'm going to talk about here in a little bit, um, those have pushed those back a little bit to the end of the year. It, delaying those projects, those two project sites, um, I'm not concerned about, so I don't think it's, it's really a, a big deal for that. So uh, next I'll just move into the 2019 projects. Um, I'll start off with our Span, Span Bridge project. Uh, we are under contract with l and contractors to construct a 100-foot reinforced concrete haunt slab on Waterwell Road between Niles and Whitmore. Um, I, I talked to l and the other day and they've pushed that project back to uh, an October start date uh, and then we're looking at you know, around a six-month construction time frame on that one. For the 2019 reinforced concrete box projects, I have um, six of them, six scheduled projects that's going to be bid as a package, and those are the um, the light blue circles on the map, as well as, as the uh, same as what I talked about on the 2018 projects. Um, those, the plans and specifications for those projects are done. They're, they're finished up and what I'm waiting on is a couple landowners. Um, I'm waiting on the, some temporary easements before we can move forward with those projects and get that out for bid. So I'm hoping we can have that done before the end of the month. And you're, we're probably looking at a, um, 
this winter or spring of 2020 construction time frame on those there. Then the other um, reinforced concrete box project is on Don Meyer Road, just north of the, uh, Sl uh, the Smoky Hill River. And that's the project that um, the existing structure was damaged with all the flooding in the area up through there. And so the Sling County contracted with Reese Construction for $105,603.35 to replace that project. And the, one of the requirements on that project, um, you know, was a very tight time frame. Um, they were actually scheduled to start construction yesterday, uh, but because of all the flooding that we had last week, um, that's a no go. And so we've <laughs> got to wait for it to dry up. It's for the most part all the water's gone down um, there, and so we just have to give it another day or two to, to dry up and hopefully Reese will, will get in there and, and get started. So the detour has been uh, installed and that's, I think they s installed that last week, I believe it was Wednesday. So that's, that's sitting there, um, you know, ready for the project to get started. And, and again, um, we're looking at about a two month construction um, time frame with this, hopefully a little bit less, but you know, weather plays a pretty big role in that. <laughs> Um, okay, next I'll move on to our uh, road maintenance program. I'll start off with crack seal. And if you look at the map, that is the dark blue line. So we are under contract with Pavement Pros uh, to do our, our crack seal this year. Uh, so far, we've done about $20,000 worth of work out of um, around a $95,000, $96,000 contract. Um, and so a lot of those roads were the roads that... Um, you know, we were going to we were going to chip seal, or you know, I was kind of concerned with uh, the wheat harvest as well on that. So we got those taken care of, and so just the dark blue ones on your map is what we have finished. And Pavement Pros is they're looking at completing those roads in September time frame is kind of what they're thinking right now. Uh, next, I'll move on to the bituminous chip seal, and that is the green line on the map. We're under contract with Circle C Paving and Construction uh, to do our, our bituminous chip seal. Um, I talked with Circle C and they're, they've pushed this back from, you know, an early August to now a mid-September to start these projects. Um, this, the, the chip seal program, we did have a couple change orders for this and the, the first change order was we exchanged Niles Road, let me see if I can get the pointer. Yeah, right up here. So you got uh, Niles Road north of Old 81. That one was scheduled to have a chip seal, but we removed that project. Well, we exchanged it for Burma uh, from Fallen Road south to the county line. Um, I, we just felt that um, Burma was starting to get quite a few potholes this year. You know, when potholes decide to show up, you know, they don't come you know, in singles. They usually come up in, in, in groups. So that, that road was really starting to get distressed. And so I think we, we, we made a decision we better get that thing chip sealed before it gets any worse. We go through another winter. The other change order was there's two sections on Waterwell Road um, that I've talked with the commission about that in the past. And so it's um, the first section is from the on Waterwell Road to Smoky Hill River Bridge to Holmes. And then from Simpson Road west a half a mile we eliminated the the chip seal on on those two half mile sections and that was mainly because of the the condition of those roads um it you know a chip seal doesn't add any structural capacity to those roads and where that that roads add is, is we needed some some structure added to it uh, so we decided not to to chip seal that um, I think that was it with the chip seal, so I'll move on to the, um, the hot mix asphalt patching and overlay. And those are the light uh, blue lines on the map. We, uh, Sling County is under contract with APAC Kansas for $1,761,753.82. Uh, work is anticipated to start around mid-October on that. Um, and we did have, we, or we do have one change order on that, and that is that the two sections on Waterwell Road that we removed from the chip seal, we added to the overlay project. And so we're going to add uh, four and a half inches of asphalt onto that section of road there. 
Um, okay, so now we have just road improvement projects, and these are, are more like upgrade projects, and that is the red line, uh, the, the one red line on the map, and that is um, on Waterwell Road between Burma and Lightville. Uh, that project is a, a grading project with base construction and four and a half inches of hot mix pavement. Bids were open on July 1st, 2019. APAC shares was the only bidder on that. Um, and we, we've got scheduled to talk about um, how we want to proceed with this project in the, in the study session. We, I did have um, a couple other red lines on a previously quarterly report on this project, or I'm sorry, on, um, on this map. Um, the one was on Simpson Road from Waterwell Road to Magnolia. We did remove that uh, project until we can kind of determine a, a project scope and a, and a budget um, for that project. And then we had a, a couple projects that the county crews were going to upgrade, and this was more of a gravel road upgrade. Uh, so they're currently gravel roads, and the crews were going to get in there and elevate the road, add gravel, and reshape it, and all that. But with all of the flooding going on, um, we just don't have the time or the materials uh, to do that type of work. And that was on Simpson Road between Waterwell and Minner, and then on Holmes Road between North Street and Cloud Street. So as you can see on your map, you know, we, we took those projects off. Uh, next, uh, moving on to the capital improvement program um, that we're, um, we, we've got scheduled and having the budget. Um, we haven't really, we haven't done much with, with that yet, but I just wanted to uh, bring it to your attention that this is uh, something that is um, something we want to get completed, and that is when you update the lights in the engineering building and the traffic control building, as well as um, do some a, a construction project on the bathroom in the traffic control building. And then the other 2019 CIP project is uh, the construction of a retaining, a concrete, reinforced concrete retaining wall around our, um, our fuel tanks. Right now it's, it's got an, uh, an earth, earth dam around that and we want to replace that with a concrete. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where we're at with our, our capital improvement. There's of course always more, but I just wanted to bring up the, the 2019 projects. Um, miscellaneous items I wanted to bring up and, and kind of update the, the, the commission about is um, off-system off -system bridge program through KDOT Bureau of Local Projects. And so every year the, uh, the federal government tells KDOT that there needs to be so much money, federal money, spent on um, off-system. These are, these are either local roads or minor collector roads. Um, for cities and counties, and I, I believe the number is around eight million dollars. Um, and then this is really protected money um, that has to go to um, to the locals. And so they had a call for projects, and I submitted the the Minner the Minner Road Bridge project, um, which is is the project east of Gypsum Valley Road. Uh, I believe that project has been submitted several other times for this program and have not been selected. Uh, this, the existing bridge is the last fracture critical bridge we have in the county and so it would be good to, to get that uh, project taken care of. Um, however, they're using federal funds if, if we are awarded and if we do accept um, the funds then there are a lot of requirements you know, that's attached to these dollars. Um, you know, and so it's, it's a project that if we do get um, you know, we're probably looking at a two to two and a half year time frame before construction starts, you know, because there's a long approval process with this to get this going. So, um, and so that's something we can talk about um, if, we, if we are awarded some funds. Um, and we can talk about that later on. Uh, the other one is the biannual bridge inspections. Uh, every two years we have to um, inspect every drainage structure that's longer than 20 feet in the county. Uh, and so every two years we have to do that. We do that in-house and we're just now completing that pro process right now. The um, railroad crossings. Um, I wanted to kind of give the board an update on that. I did call the Union Pacific the other day to, to talk about the railroad crossing on Country Club 
as well as Simpson Road up there by or Simpson and Old Highway 40. Um, I talked with, um, he is the track manager, I believe is his title. And so for the crossing on Country Club, uh, the project has been designed. Um, materials have been um, ordered or purchased, and I think they might even have those in their warehouse right now. And so now they just have to get it scheduled to get um, constructed. And so they're looking at anywhere from six to eight weeks to get that project replaced. That's where we're, they're at right now. However, um, the UP it only has the east tracks. There's two sets of tracks there. One's the, the east set of tracks is, is owned by the UP and the the north set of tracks is privately owned. And um, the UP, I'm supposed to call them, I think it was on, on Thursday, this week Thursday, because they were going to talk to Schooler and to see if they can, if, if those tracks are being used, because uh, they would, in ideal situations, if we can remove those tracks out of the roadway, and we've I'm only confused, had one crossing. I'm confused, Justin. I'm confused when you say a, an east set of tracks and a north set of tracks. I mean, those those tracks run parallel to one another. Why wouldn't it be an east and a west? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I probably misspoke there. Yeah, it's it's an east and a west. And so they the, the UP owns the east set of tracks. Yes. And that's the one that they're going to replace the crossing. And now we have the west set of tracks. Um, that is privately owned, okay, by by Schooler. Uh, do we even know if those are used? Well, and that's what the UP is going to talk to to Schooler about. Because and there's a switch, and the, the the whole problem with those with that crossing right there is there's a switch that's partially in the road. So you've got moving parts in the roadway, and so that makes that crossing a lot more difficult to upgrade. Um, I'm hoping, and I think the the UP is hoping that they'll allow them to remove that crossing uh, because I guess there is another set of um, there's another switch further on to the south that they do use so well, it uh, sounds to me like we need to get Schooler involved in this too I mean as we as we uh, move along in the process because Schooler I mean if they don't okay the money that's going to be spent on on fixing their portion of it uh, you know it doesn't do us any good to fix the UP. Right, yeah. And, and this is a UP project. There's no local funds um, right. being spent on this. But, yeah, you're right. And it's and the, the UP, this um, Zach, who I've, been, who I've been talking with there, they're going to contact Schooler and get them involved and see. And that's where I'm supposed to call the UP back on Thursday uh, to ask them how that conversation went. And see how we're going to move forward. Uh, good, um, and and I mean, if you don't hear from them by Thursday, I w I would suggest that you contact schoolers because we sure. certainly got to get them on board. It needs to be done at the same time, mm -hmm. not. Oh sure, yeah, you know. no, and that and that's why the UP is contacting them because they're wanting to do it, you know, re it, do something with those tracks during their project, um, and they can just incorporate the whole thing into one big project. And you're 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 saying that you may hear from UP as early as Thursday. I'm, Zach told me to call him Thursday, and, okay. and Zach is, is actually uh, very good at answering and returning calls, and so I'm, I'm pretty confident that I'll, I'll, I'll be talking to him by the end of the week. Good deal. So, And then the, uh, the project on um, Simpson and Old 40, you know, the, the right now there's a concrete crossing where the, the top of that crossing, the, the concrete spalled off quite a bit, and there's exposed rebar, and it's rough. Um, and they're, they're looking at, they're trying to determine whether they can patch it or completely replace it or if they're going to need to completely replace it. Um, they're hoping they can patch it. Um, they said they've got a pretty, a, a good material to do that that'll hold together well. Um, but there's, they're, they've been aware of this project uh, for a while. And they said they had a similar crossing on Santa Fe. Um, as far as a, a similar condition wise and that they were able to patch it and it and it worked well um, so but they are aware of it and um, he wasn't sure when that was going to get that project was going to get completed um, but he'll he'll I'll probably have to just keep calling him you know having a routine phone call to him just to get an update on that uh, the last thing that I had um, was the, and I've been working on the last couple of days, is uh, some mitigation projects with FEMA. And so we, we have to submit an, uh, a letter of intent for these projects. 
And so what I've been working on is there's a, uh, one project is on Kingman Road, uh, just northeast of the uh, city of Jip, right there where it curves and goes on, on a bridge right there. And then the, uh, the second one is um, Gypsum Valley Road, just north of their dike system. Um, I went there yesterday and, and took a bunch of pictures in the morning and it's, it's, there's a lot of road damage there. Um, and so with those two projects where, you know, we're, I'm going to submit a, uh, a paving job, you know, so where we can get some asphalt pavement put on this so we quit losing our, our road gravel. Uh, I haven't pulled up the reports yet, but part of my submittal is going to be how much money we spent on those two locations, you know, here in just the last few months. And I know we've rebuilt those roads several times. Um, and so hopefully those two, I think we've got a good chance of getting. The other two uh, projects, those are where the, um, the river is um, really starting to erode the, the bank, stream bank, and it's starting to erode into the roadway. And so we're looking at a road realignment project. Uh, the first one is on uh, Stimmel, Stimmel and Jasper at that intersection, and then the other one is um, south of the intersection of Stimmel and Cunningham. Could you point those out for me, please? I will do my best. Okay, so Stimmel, Stimmel and Jasper is about right there. I've had, it looks like I've had way too much coffee, how shaky my pointer is. And then Stimmel and Cunningham is over in this area. That might have been it right there. Yeah. Yeah, about in, in that area right, right there. I think that's that road right there. And so I'm going to submit a, a roadway um, realignment, try to move the road away from that, um, that erosion. So we'll submit them, um, see if they get approved. Um, it doesn't hurt to submit them, so that's kind of what we're going we're gonna to try anyway. Okay, I want to make the comment uh, going back to Simpson Road, uh, the portion south of Magnolia that we redid last year. Mm -hmm. uh, all the flooding, all the, the, the weather that we've had in the past few months, uh, that road is in remarkable shape, which which tells me that's that's the the area that we need to be leaning towards in, in redoing some of these roads as opposed to certainly as opposed to the chip seal. Mm -hmm. I mean uh, that road is is uh, hasn't had a lot of maintenance required of it uh, throughout all this weather process. So that's certainly I mean I'm preaching to the choir. I know that you know that uh, that that process. Uh, you guys were right mm -hmm. on how that should have been handled and. Uh, the, the restructuring of that road was handled in a proper manner. Thank you. And uh, it is held up well, and we need to continue that path. Yeah, so. it, it's all about getting rid of the water, you know, with, with a proper right. crown in the road, right. um, the, the ditches cleaned, and then with a proper grade, so we can get the water away from the road as fast as possible. That's, that's the key. Other comments or questions from the commissioners? Okay. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Good job. Uh, that brings us to the end of today's uh, agenda. Uh, other business or announcements, I will say that I spent about three and a half hours uh, last Friday night in the jail watching the process go there um, from booking to, uh, you know, corrections and, and in the pods. And uh, it was, it was a, a very informative uh, time to, and time well spent on my part, I think. So any other questions or announcements or so forth from commissioners? not, I'll take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we adjourn today's meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion is adjourned. The commission meeting is adjourned. We will have a second commission meeting immediately following.